You can recover from a messed up situation. You can recover from being broke. You can recover from rock bottom. You can recover from heartbreak. You can recover from defeat. You can recover. You can. I posted those words to a social media account on May 20th. 300 retweets right now, uh, about 1,000 likes, 30,000 views. So clearly it's a topic that is close to people and it's a topic that people want to speak about and things that they want to see on their feed. So let's go in. The very first line says you can recover from a messed up situation. The very the very nature of life is that we all will experience messed up situations at one point or another. Um, you can be positive. You can have all the luck. You can have all the advantages. You can have everything working in your favor and in your honor. Uh, but life is life. There there will be loss. There will be grief. There will be disappointment, uh, sorrow. There will be sadness. Uh, there will be anger. There will be things that trigger you to, to make you confused, uh, will make you ponder and wonder. If you are a normal human being, you will feel the full gamut of these emotions. Um, and then here's the thing. Sometimes bad things happen to good people. You know, I assume the person watching this is a good person. But bad things happen to good people, you know, all the time. Messed up situations happen um, because we make mistakes. Uh, we we overthink sometimes. Sometimes we underthink. <laughs> uh, sometimes we're overperforming and underperforming, and that causes the messed up situation. Sometimes you're just in the wrong place at the wrong time. There's so many. Uh, the whole messed up situation line. There's so much nuance to it that I want to move forward. And the truth is, you know, my granny used to always say life will knock you down and it's not about getting knocked down. And she says what matters most is if you get up and you stand strong. And I actually have those words tattooed on my arm. You know, it was very important for her to, to tell me those words. And so what matters most is if you get up and if you just stand strong. You know, now I do want to say this, that the the the. the culture we live in makes us think standing strong means we have to do everything on our own. And it took me, you know, 30 something years to learn this, but standing strong really means coming, coming to your community and allowing yourself to be witness in community. And sure, there's a lot of people that are like, hey, I'm self-made. I did it all on my own. Um, and you didn't. You didn't. You absolutely did not. We, we all have had some support, even if it was a stranger, right? Even if it was someone who wasn't family. We've all had different people to support us and, and guide us. We've all had different uh, masters and teachers and uh, angels and helpers and supporters throughout our life because that too is the human condition. That too is the human condition. So it's really important that you you don't take a you know an individualistic mindset of oh it's all me it's all me it's all me because we all need support from other people. And as you grow up, as you become wiser, as you acquire more resources, as you acquire more knowledge and experience, I feel as if it's your duty to put younger people or even people who, who are same of same age, but maybe not as integrated, to put other people in a position to benefit off of your experience, off of your wisdom. You know, that's what that's that's what we call elders. Right. Elders are in our communities to help guide us through these different thresholds of life that we experience. Because, again, the very nature of life is that you will experience messed up situations. OK, you can recover from being broke. You know, I remember when I was in college, there was this uh, rapper I used to listen to. His name was Chameleon. You probably heard of Chameleon, depending on your age. He doesn't make any music now. I think he does investments and things of that nature. But um, I mean, he was a phenomenal rapper. He had a lot of very popular songs. Uh, he didn't swear in his songs. His his the themes in his music uh, were making money, hustling, um, being creative, you know, really, really being mindful of your circle, who you talk to. And um, he had this song called 
I won't let you down. And I just, I remember being so poor, like not broke poor. I remember being poor and I would listen to this song called I Won't Let You Down. It was on an album called uh, The Ultimate the Ultimate Victory. And this song was so motivational for me because I feel like he was t basically using the affirmation saying, I won't let you down. But I feel like he was talking to himself. This is just, this is just me trying to recall a song from a long time ago. And when I was poor, when I was depressed, when I was sad, when I didn't feel like I had real friends, when I knew the girl I was seeing at the time was seeing other guys, when I couldn't turn to my parents because they had their own struggles and vices and problems and pain, when I truly felt like it was just me, I would listen to this song every day. Um, and he, he would just say, I won't let you down. I won't let you down. I won't let you down. You know, and one of the lyrics in the song is like he would say, and I'm going to paraphrase, he would say something along the lines of, um, there's nothing wrong with being broke. Um, there's something wrong with being broke and acting like there's no hope. You know, and he was essentially saying that that, you know, being broke is just a mindset in the moment. It's just a situation in the moment. Right. But as long as you have your mind, if you're affirming the reality that you want and you're affirming what you want to create, then you being broke won't last. You know, that's the message I got from it. You being broke won't last. Um, so I think with with any situation we're in in life, you know, I do coaching. And one of the things I always try to tell my, my, my clients is like, look, there's two ways to approach things. You have the emotional inner consciousness, your inner thought operating system, your inner how you perceive yourself. And then there's like the strategic how to do bullet point pathway to do lists check these boxes right and like we're always trying to figure out which way to do things and like sometimes you just need the boxes and you need the the pathway but most most of the problems that we experience in the human condition are related to the subconscious they're related to they're related to this inner operating system they're related to how we think they're they're related to how we perceive they're related to how we feel about ourselves or the story that we're telling about our life or the story from our past that we believe and, and, and so a lot of the times you don't really need the how to a lot of the times you don't need the steps. I do feel like that's usually a second or third layer or phase, if you want to call it that. The first phase is, you know, facing your shadow It's facing your darkness. It's, it's, it's facing the emotions that you're carrying within It's facing your consciousness to see how you think about yourself and why you think about yourself. Right. So being broke, if you feel like you're broke, yeah, it's like you could go online and you can find a million videos that will teach you, you know, how to make a, a business operating system that can generate you revenue. But if you're if you do that with a broke mindset or a broke heart, what happens? Well, you probably lose it all. So if you feel broke or you feel broken, you know, go within and this this work is hard, but you got to go within. You got to go within. You have to look at your shadow. You have to look at your emotions. You know, something has to be integrated. You have to look at your fear. You have to look at your shame. You have to look at your sorrow and your sadness. And you have to bring those to the table. You can't just leave them out there. You know, one of my favorite therapists, Francis Weller, he says that he says that even our outcast brothers and sisters deserve a seat at the table. And what he's referring to is the version of you that's full of shame, the version of you that's that's full of hate. You know, the version of you that's full of agony, the version of you that's full of sorrow like that. Those versions of you deserve to sit at the table with the version of you that's thriving, that's happy, that's that's joking, that's uh, flirtatious, that's beautiful. Like it can't just be he calls on the ascension emotions. It can't just be like everything in, in the ascension. So if you feel broke, I need you to integrate like what's what's not working. I need you to integrate. OK, you can recover from from rock bottom. You can recover from heartbreak. My, my my best friend, one of my best friends right now is going through a heartbreak. He calls me every day and we we're checking in on each other. We're checking in on each other. And. A couple things with heartbreak. Sometimes, sometimes heartbreak is how you're perceiving the situation. And sometimes when you get space 
from the situation, you'll realize that your heart was never broken to begin with. You know, not to say you weren't dealing with pain or not dealing with some pain because you probably are. But sometimes you'll get so far removed from it and you'll just realize like, man, that version of me. Yeah, that version of me was most most likely had a, a broken heart. But now now that I'm looking at that version of me, it's like it, it was actually unnecessary. At least I mean, at least that's been my experience. I think about I think about the one time. The one time I remember what I felt like was a was a broken heart and it really was a lack of experience. I had never dealt with that type of frustration, you know, for someone, uh, quote unquote, leaving you. But at least in that situation, you know, she wasn't treating me the way I needed to be treated anyways. So it was actually a good thing. So even though in the moment it didn't feel good because I felt like I was being abandoned um, I felt like, why me? Like, why would she leave me? I was victim posturing. Um, the truth is she wasn't treating me the way that I deserved. And by getting out of that relationship, I got to truly reflect and ask myself, OK, what do I want? What type of woman do I want to be with? What type of woman do I want in my space? What type of woman can I allow to get to know me? What type of woman can I share my time with? All right. And so if you're going through a heartbreak, those are questions you really need to ask yourself. It's like, what type of person do you want to be around? So, no, let me go back. What type of person do you want to be? It's more important that you focus on who you want to be, what you allow, what you attract. It's more important that you focus on that, what your boundaries are, what your standards are, what your respect is. It's more important that you focus on that because you're going to attract something that's going to vibrate at the level that will be in congruence with the relationship you want. And I'm not trying to dismiss your pain if you, if you feel heartbroken. Heartbroken is, is a real thing that we experience, but it's, it's very possible that maybe just maybe that person is not in alignment with you. Right. It's possible that they're not in alignment with you. And look, life is hard when it comes to matters of the heart relationships. It's not always easy. I understand that. I understand that. Um, the last thing I wrote was you can recover from defeat. I truly feel that life is, there's wins, there's losses, but I feel like it's more nuanced than that. Like it's more colorful than that. Like I get, I mean, look, like you can't, okay, look, I'm drinking, this is reverse osmosis water that I got from the grocery store. I was able to go to the grocery store today and get organic food. It was like $180. And I had like, I got like some really good, good food, some really high quality meat, fresh, fruits and vegetables like I'm on a camera that is just an amazing camera in a beautiful house and I have my health and I'm able to to speak about something I'm passionate about right and what I'm naming is just present moment things that I'm grateful for right and so yeah you you have defeats you have losses but there's so much to be blessed you know there's so many blessings in our lives um there's so much that we can look around and it's like wow I have this I have that. Like, are you really losing? You know, are you really losing? Did, did you really get defeated? Did you really get defeated? You know, and again, I don't, you know, I don't want to trick you out of it. Maybe you did, you know, but did you really get defeated? Are you really losing? You know, I just want us to be mindful of the language that we're using. Did you, did you really lose? You calling yourself a loser. Are you really a loser? You have two legs, you have a job, you have a heartbeat, you got food in your house, you have friends you can call, you're spending time on the internet watching videos that are hopefully inspiring you, uh, helping you be the best person you can be. Are you really losing? Is that really what a loser does? I mean, I don't know. I don't know if I don't know. I don't know if you're a loser. You're, you're probably not a loser. <laughs> you're probably just going through a funk. And you just need to get back on that horse, as they say. I'm praying for you. I'm rooting for you. You always got a friend in me if you you know choose to be here. I'm so glad that you're here. Thank you so much. Live the life you deserve.